Corin, I thought the hive incursion on the planet would never reach his tiny little village. He was wrong. The attack had begun an hour ago, and what little defences they could muster were crumbling already. A large centipede-like creature ran past the barricade he was holding. As it began to curl into itself, spikes protruded from its body. They had seen this before. It was about to explode. It won't run away from the creature except him, and not by choice. His injured leg made this impossible. Except someone was running towards the creature. With heavy steps, an armored soldier easily twice his size ran and kicked the living grenade away from Corrin. As it exploded, two spikes pierced the soldier's arm and abdomen. The giant then took a syringe from a pouch, then jetted its contents into his neck. My shutter was in the back. Take it. I'll hold them off. Two of his friends ran back and helped get Corrin to the escape vessel. As he looked back, his savior began to laugh as he fired on full auto at the oncoming wave of chitin. When Corrin came back from the capital, accompanying the troops sent to retake his village, he saw what seemed like a miracle. The soldier was sitting on a rock at the entrance to the village, his arm and stomach cruelly bandaged. He had a smile on his face and was smoking a cigar. His name was Apone. He was a human ranger. He had been part of an Alliance crew that was in orbit, monitoring the high progress. He had noticed the attack on our village and volunteered for a rescue mission. Our orders were to observe for five damn months. All we did was watch. His eyes turned dark, Corrin noticed, but they quickly brightened again. Luckily, two days ago, we were told to engage at our discretion. The boys would have loved to join me, but I made the call and came alone. Couldn't risk and bust getting access to too much human DNA to evolve themselves with. Corrin learned that a poem was a sergeant, a lower rank officer in the human army. Before leaving, Corrin asked him to return one day to show him around. A poem smiled. It's a promise. I'll bring my kid, Manuela. She always wanted to travel, and my tour is nearly done. Days turned to weeks, then months, and finally three years had passed and Apoen had still not returned. Corrin took it upon himself to track down the man to whom he owed his life. When he approached the human embassy and explained why he was tracking the ranger, the woman at the desk smiled and began searching. It wasn't long before she found the answer, and then her smile dropped. Corrin walked from the embassy to the ship that had taken him to the capital in a daze. He couldn't believe what he had been told. He wouldn't. He vowed to conduct his own research. But it was true. The man who had faced a hive army to save him and his village had died on the streets, homeless and forgotten. After his return to civilian life, he had tried to reintegrate but failed. He had nightmares about what he had seen, what he had done, but what really haunted him was what he hadn't done. His temper suffered from this lack of sleep, and he became extremely irritable. Alcohol helped dull his senses, but being drunk most of the time cost him his job. When his wife left him, it was the final straw. Being separated from her and his daughter was more than he could bear. He left his rented apartment one day. I wasn't found or heard of until months later, when he was found dead. Corum couldn't understand why, how something like this could happen. Such a man, such a hero, forgotten left to die on the streets, left to rot. He had no problem convincing the elders to build a statue of Sergeant Apone at the village entrance. He would personally tell his story to anyone who asked who he was, so his sacrifices would never be forgotten. Corrin was an old man now. His species did not live very long, and it had been over a decade since the monument had been put in place, yet he still came out of his habitation to tell Apone's story when any visitor or newcomer asked about the statue. Today, his grandson had come running to fetch him. He had said only two words. It's her. Corrin stood next to a young woman. She was looking at the statue. It depicted Sergeant Apone, bandaged arm and abdomen, sitting on a rock, smoking a cigar, a broad smile on his face. You know how he lived? The young woman nodded, never taking her eyes off the statue. Do you know how he died? The young woman's lips quivered, but she eventually nodded. Corum then extended his hand toward her. She took it, and they began to walk inside the village. Would you like to see all that he saved? The young woman was sobbing now, but rallied quickly. Yes, 